everyone. Welcome back to these processes from the Project Management Body of Knowledge. This one we're looking at is planning risk management. Now, where does planning risk management fall in the overall process group and knowledge area mapping in the PMBOK guide? Well, as you can see, we're in our planning phase mostly, uh, and you know there are other risk categories like implementing our risk responses and monitoring the risks as we're going along. But this is where we're actually planning the process of how we're going to manage the risk of our project. And that's where we start with our risk management plan. And of course, all these different plans will go up into our overall project management plan, as we know from previous chapters as well. Planning risk management is the process of defining how we're going to conduct our risk management activities for the project. And the, the key benefit of this process is it ensures that the degree, the type, and the visibility of all of the risk management uh, activities are proportionate to both the risks and importance of the project. So if it's a large project, maybe it's a big, big project, then maybe we need a large risk function within our project. We need a, a lot of you know, more people, maybe a particular a group of people to be focusing solely on the risk. Or if it's a small project, maybe all of these risk activities can be done by the project manager themselves. So this is something to consider. Uh, and how, how big is the risk within the project? Maybe we need other people to be involved. But all of this we can define when we're planning out the risk management for our project. So here's an overview of planning risk management. And it should begin when a project is conceived, so right at the very beginning, um, and it should be completed early in the project. So basically, when we're creating our project management plan, we want to do this as early as we possibly can in the project planning process. It may be necessary to revisit this process later, so we might be iterating and, and adding bits and pieces as we're going along. Um, for example, at major uh, phase changes. So if we've delivered a feature and now we're moving on to another feature, then maybe we need to revisit the risk and have a look at what's involved for this next piece. And of course, if we're managing and, and, and looking at the risk throughout the entire project and we need to take some action to mitigate a risk, then maybe we need to change our approach as we're going along as well. Let's look at the inputs, tools and techniques and outputs for planning risk management. We've got the project charter because of this, because we need to start planning risk from the very, very beginning when we're initiating our project, then we need to start looking at it when we're looking at our project charter, which kicks off or initiates our project. And then, of course, the project management plan. So all documents will feed into risk. Uh, there could be risk involved in anything, so a risk of loss or even uh, positive risks, so opportunities that we might come across. The, the, that could be involved in any part of our project management plan. Project documents, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets. Tools and techniques that we'll use as usual are expert judgment, data analysis, and so stakeholder analysis. We might need the different stakeholders and their expert judgment, of course. And of course, meetings to tie everything together as usual. Outputs will have other, the risk management plan itself. And planning risk management, the inputs, uh, we, we've got a lot of inputs here from developing the project charter, developing the project management plan, and of course the main output is just that risk management plan itself. Let's look at the inputs in more detail. We've got the project charter, and that's the high level project description and the project boundaries. So the high level requirements and the high level risks. So in the project charter, we should have already called out a brief view of what risks we see coming up, even though it's just a high level view. Uh, and so that will give us a, a nice input into where we should be focusing our risk activities for planning risk management. The project management plan, all approved subsidiary management plans should be taken into consideration. For that reason we spoke about before, because risk can come from any place, from the scope, maybe we're designing it uh, in, a, in a way that invites more risk, or could we could invite an opportunity through uh, changing our scope, or the quality, maybe through defects or, or other things like that, that's inviting risk into our project. And so we definitely need to be aware of all of those things and managing risk from all of those perspectives. Project documents, they're considered as inputs for this process, um, but, uh, and that could be the stakeholder register mostly. So that contains details of the, of the project's stakeholders and provides an overview of their project roles. And we may need their expert judgment as we're going along to, to extract the details of the risks in our project. 
enterprise environmental factors, this is really the overall risk thresholds. So for, for the, the key stakeholders, especially the project sponsor or whoever is funding this project as well. So maybe we've got a project management office or a key, a key function within the organization that is, that is funding this particular project and they have a very high threshold for risk. And so they're saying, yep, let's go for everything and let's just move fast and break things or whatever they want to do. Or maybe they have a very low risk threshold and they're very, very cautious. They say, we need to ch check all the boxes. We need to make sure everything has a backup and all of the, the rest of the things that they might need to do if they have a low risk threshold. Organizational process assets that can influence the, the plan risk management process include any organizational risk policies that are existing, any current risk category groups that the organization might have. They might have a current list already. Risk statement formats, common definitions of risks within the organization that might exist already. Uh, the roles and responsibilities for the people within the project and the organization and authority levels for decision making. So who needs to approve any risk responses as we're going along? And of course, lessons learned that we'll come across to try and save us the trouble from making those same mistakes in the future. Let's look at the tools and techniques for planning risk management. We've got expert judgment. So expertise should be considered from individuals or groups with specialized knowledge or training in the following topics. Familiarity with the organization's approach to managing risk. Maybe there is a specific risk department in your organization, or maybe there is someone who has uh, dealt with all of the risks in a project previously, and they're the person who you need to consult when looking at risk for your, for your project. So uh, this could be tailoring risk management to the specific needs of your project as well. So what do you need to change or modify to, to make the risk approach fit your project? And of course, the types of risks that are likely to be encountered on projects in a similar area. So lessons learned again. Data analysis will be an important tool and technique. And here we're analyzing the risk appetite of our project stakeholders. So is it high, is it low, and how do we adjust our risk management approach because of that? Meetings, of course, will help tie everything together. The risk management plan may be developed as part of the project kickoff meeting or a specific planning meeting for risk itself might be held. So attendees for this meeting might include the project manager, selected project team members, uh, key stakeholders or team members who are responsible to manage the risk management process on the project or within the organization. If there's a specific department for risk, maybe they need to come along as well. So this kickoff meeting is where we start uh, conducting risk management activities and uh, defining those activities and that goes into the risk management plan. Outputs that we'll see for this process are the risk management plan itself. So that's the first one and the risk management plan can include things like the overall risk strategy, the methodology that we'll be using, so um, how are we gathering the risks, roles and responsibilities in risk management, um, funding for risks, so where is, uh, where is the money coming from, do we have a, a contingency fund or do we have management reserves that we can tap into in the event of unknown risks coming up. Uh, the timing and tracking of risks, so how do they need to be resolved or, or looked at once they're found. Risk categories that might be existing um, and or that we have found that might apply to our project. Definitions of risk probability and impacts, so once we've found our risks, we need to assign the likelihood of them happening and the impact of when they do happen so that we can know how serious that they are. And of course, um, reporting formats, so how are we going to report these risks to the overall project once they're found. One of the great outputs of this process as well is the risk categories. So we're going to come up with a, a bunch of risk categories uh, and put them into our risk management plan as a, as a first idea of the risks that we understand for our project. And again, that could be iterative. So we might add to those as the project goes along and we review the risk management plan periodically. So this involves a risk breakdown structure similar to our work breakdown structure. We start with high level risks, so maybe a technical risk here or a management risk here, and then we, we put a list of all of those uh, risks in that particular category. So uh, the, the organization that you're working in might already have a bunch of categories uh, that they have looked at for risk before, uh, and you can use those, but you could also add your own to that. 
um, and the idea is to, to break it down to the specific uh, risk that you're looking at um, and also you know, have them in the broader categories as well. Another output for this process is the actual definition of risk probability and impact. So once we have that list of, of potential risks within our project, we also want to assign the probability and the impact score. So usually it's a number, but it can be you know, a word or low, medium or high, for example. Um, but let's say if, if it's on a category of one to five, and five is a high probability and five is a high impact, then what we actually do is we multiply those together. So if, uh, if the first risk that we define has a, a probability of five and an impact of five, then it's got 25 and that would be the highest by multiplying that together. That would be the highest probability and impact. And we really want to be serious about managing and keeping an eye on that risk. Now, if it has a low probability and a low impact, then that ends up being one. Um, one times one equals one. So that it would, would be something that we don't really need to worry about as much. And that just gives us a good idea for how we can, uh, which ones we need to keep an eye on and which ones we can sort of push to the side for now. Now, when, we, when we're doing that, we're actually, we can put that into a visual form as well. And that's our probability and impact matrix. So in other words, when we're multiplying them by each other, and it could, it could be you know, a percentage or it could be one to five. So however your organization does it or the organization that you're working in. Um, but again, uh, on the left corner here, then we've got the very low probability and low impact all the way up to the higher probability and higher impact. So as you can see, uh, this one is using more of a percentage, like 0.9. If we were to multiply that by 100, that's our percentage of say 90% and 80% here. Um, so that's the way they're using it in this particular probability and impact matrix. And this is just a good way to, to group. Now we can see all of the high probability and impact risks up in this corner, and they're the ones that are grouped together. Maybe they have an affinity with each other. So we could use an affinity style diagram where, um, where we're grouping all of the risks with the high probability and impact to keep an eye on. But now that gives us a really great overview and we've planned out all of those risk management activities and how we're going to manage risk as part of our project.